Hey there everyone. Um, last time I left you we were talking about BJTs or bipolar junction transistors um, and we worked out um, how we get current to flow through them and how we can increase and decrease the, um, the collector current. Now I'm going to go through another type of transistor which is the FET or the JFET as we'll look today and um, I've got just got a couple of examples here so there's your your metal can varieties it's got three pins or three legs just like the BJT and I've just got a a smaller one encased in a plastic housing again it's got three legs there so we're going to go into the theory of operation of these JFETs and um, and see what we need to do in order to get them to operate now just quickly we dealt with the BJT before and we found we had a collector, a base, and an emitter. In order to get any of our collector current flowing, which is, I guess, your output current, we needed to turn on the transistor by forward biasing the base emitter junction. In order to forward bias it, we needed around about um, 0.7 of a volt difference between the base and emitter. That would forward bias it, we'd get current flow through here and as long as we placed a positive potential up here at the collector um, we could get collector current flow. By increasing the base a little bit we would increase the collector by a lot. Decreasing the base a little bit would decrease the collector a lot. So we got amplification out of it. JFETs also achieve amplification um, they just do it in a little bit of a different way. So I'll go through a bit of theory and um, we'll just see where we can get to with this. Now just before we get into actually talking about these JFETs, I want to give you some analogies um, or an analogy to help you understand what's actually happening. Now picture that we've got a sprinkler. So that's my sprinkler there and water would come out there obviously. And we've got a hose connected to the sprinkler, which comes along here over to the tap. Just like that. So, here's the tap over here. If we were to come along to the tap and start turning it on, we're going to start getting some water coming out of the sprinkler. If we increase the tap, or if we turn the tap on more, then we increase the flow of water and we get more, more water flowing through. If we continue to turn on the tap, we get more and more water flow and you'll find that we eventually get to a point where for further increases in the tap, or when we further turn on the tap, uh, the water just stays the same. So it does not increase the flow of water through here. So we've reached saturation pretty much. Now, if we were to leave the tap so it's fully on, we've got all this water coming through, and we were to come and walk along over here, and we stepped down a little bit on the hose, then we're starting to crush the hose. If we're crushing the hose, even though the tap remains the same, the water flow would decrease. If we were to push down a little harder on the hose, then we're crushing it even more and the water flow decreases even more. Eventually, we'll get to a point where we push down so hard on the hose that we completely cut it off and the water just stops. If we then release our foot pressure, water starts again. If we release it some more, we get more water. And if we completely take our foot off, we're back to where we were before with our uh, maximum flow of water. So this is a good analogy for how a JFET works. A JFET works by first turning on the tap or connecting a positive potential to the, um, the drain and source as you'll see in a minute and we start to get some current flow which is just like our water flow. We can then control this flow of current by pretty much stepping on the, um, on the hose or by restricting um, the current flow in the JFET. So, with all that in mind, let's continue on. 
All right, so I'll draw this up very similar to what I had for the BJT. And we'll start with a block of n-type semiconductor material. We're going to call this our n-channel. We're going to have two wires connected here. One is called the source, one is the drain, very similar to the emitter and collector. This is the source of the electrons, and they flow through to the drain and back to the source. We can come along and connect this to a power supply. And once again, we, we don't actually just connect it like that. We obviously put it into a circuit um, with various components and resistors and things. But just to give you an idea, you can see there's the positive potential up there and the negative down there. So the drain is positive with respect to the source. If we now make that a variable supply, then that's like our tap. So we could turn the tap on a little bit, or we could turn it on a lot, or we could even turn it turn it off if we wanted. All right, so we've got this block of n-type semiconductor material. And if you remember back to the hose, I said we could come along with our foot and step on the hose. That would restrict the, um, the water flow through the hose. What we've actually got here is a band, if you like, so going around the app, the outside. So this band goes around the outside. If you can picture this as um, a cylindrical um, device, and we've put a band that has gone around this thing. So I've just drawn this flat just to try and make it a bit easier. But this band, if you can imagine, goes around the outside, and it would come around this side again. So, this is made of P-type semiconductor material, and we give it the name, the gate. So we've got our drain, that's like the collector, the gate, that's like the base, and the source, that's like the, um, the emitter. Now, we don't actually need to do anything to the gate here in order to get current to flow. We can just leave the gate disconnected, turn this thing on, and we'll get current to flow, just like with our tap analogy. We increase the tap we're going to increase the current flow through here. We increase it even more. Again, we get an increase in current. We will eventually get to a point, let's just call it four volts, where for further increases in the supply voltage, we no longer get any further increases in current. We call this saturation, and it works very similar to how your tap worked. You increase your tap um, after a certain point, and you don't get any more water coming through. All right, now you may notice, actually I'll do this, I'll put a, a negative supply here, just to show you the um, potential. So the gate needs to be negative with respect to the source. So the source, let's just keep it at zero volts, so it's just, let's just call this ground. You can see we've got a negative power supply here. So that will make that point there more negative than here. So it'll be negative 0.2 volts or negative 1 or negative 2. The drain is the most positive point. It's more positive than here and it's more positive than here. That enables us to get current to flow through like that. Now, if I can start talking about the foot analogy, the f when we step on the hose, that restricted the current or well, that restricted the water flow through the hose. Now, what, what, how we create the foot with this is with the reverse bias junction between this P-type that's going around the N-type material. If we connect this up in reverse bias, so negative to the P-type, positive to the N-type, which is all in here, we've actually reverse biased it and we're creating a depletion region. So we will get a depletion region between the two. Just like that. Remember the depletion region is a very high resistance region. So all in here is just very high resistance. Therefore, our channel gets smaller. If our channel's, channel's smaller, we get less current flow. So the gate is actually what controls how big this depletion region gets. If we made this negative one volt, we're actually making the depletion region bigger. 
as compared to um, when we had zero volts there. Because remember, when we first manufacture a PN junction, there's already a depletion region there. That's why we need the 0.7 to overcome it. So if we further reverse bias it, it gets even bigger. If we further reverse bias it again, it gets even bigger still. So maybe negative 1.5 volts. If we further reverse bias it, negative 2, again it gets even bigger. So you may notice that as this depletion region is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, our channel is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That means that we're starting to push down on the hose and we're restricting the water flow through it. So here, we're squeezing in on this channel and we're restricting the flow of electrons through here. So the current flow decreases. We will eventually get to a point, let's say 4 volts, where we have completely cut off the channel and we have stopped the flow of current through here. So that's just like we come along and we, we press down hard on, with our foot on the hose and we've completely stopped the water from flowing through. So just like the base controlled the collector current with the BJTs, the gate is what controls the current through here. Except this time it's um, with a reverse bias voltage. If we put zero volts back on here, we're right back to a really small depletion region. So we're right back to the depletion region that it had at manufacture. The more negative we make the gate, the bigger the depletion region gets, so the more we're restricting the channel and the less current flow we get through here. Alright, so you've been looking at all this and you may be thinking, well, what good is that? Well, I said with the BJTs that if we were to increase and decrease the base current, then the collector current would increase and decrease. So we could have a little audio signal coming in on the input that would go up and down, and that would cr cause the output to go up and down um, by a greater amount because it gets amplified. We're doing the same thing here. So we could have an input coming in here, let's say from a microphone or something like that, and then our output is actually out of the drain. So I should draw this a bit better. So that would sort of come up there. We'd have a resistor here. And that's, um, that jumps over there. That's not connected. That's connected there. So that would be our output there. So what's happening is we've got an input coming in here and that's causing the gate to go up and down which is causing the depletion region to get smaller and bigger and smaller and bigger which effectively causes the current flow through here to increase and decrease. So it's the gate voltage that opens and closes this hose allowing more current to flow through or less current to flow through. And that's how we can get it to um, to work as an amplifier. So remember, JFETs work differently to BJTs in that we don't have any forward bias junctions. In order to increase the current flow, we need to take some restriction off the channel by decreasing the reverse bias between the gate and the source. If we want to decrease the current, then we need to restrict the channel more by increasing the reverse bias between the gate and the source. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.